What's going on YouTube fam? We are going to replace the head gasket on a 97 Ford Mustang 3.8 V6. Um, I already took it down to the intake manifold because uh, I, I could visually see that it was leaking from the intake manifold but um, we're still the car is still not starting and uh, we're getting a lot of back pressure from the out of the radiator and the reservoir bottle so we're gonna go in uh, let's just get right to it first thing you want to do is remove the air filter hose so there is a clamp in the front and a clamp in the back just a simple flathead for that there's a couple clips you want to disconnect there's one here there's one here and there's another underneath the next thing you want to do is start removing all of the vacuum hoses. This is our second time at it, so what we did the first time was just leave the other end connected uh, as much as you could. Everything pretty much falls back in place, um, so it's fairly easy to put back together. Uh, but, but yeah, as a rule of thumb, you want to just leave one end connected and just disconnect the areas that you're actually working with directly. If you're having a little trouble sometimes getting a flathead screwdriver will help you get the the hoses out just kind of work them off then just start removing all of the additional clips uh, and hoses that are attached to anything that might be in your way we actually disconnected one of the spark plug wires we actually disconnected two of the spark plug wires to be able to move the distributor out of the way uh, there are two bolts uh, that are holding the distributor at the bottom and then there's one on the top once you loosen up those bolts uh, it's fairly easy to just slide the, uh, the distributor out of the way so you can get access to the other parts so once you have all the bolts off you just want to slide the distributor back get that out of the way it's just easier to just remove all the clips um, so you have a little more wiggle room inside again we we didn't want to take it completely apart we, we tried to keep everything as as connected as possible so the next step is to remove the six bolts that are holding down the top end of the intake manifold uh, there's the four on top there, and there are two on the side uh, that you'll have to get to. So six bolts total uh, to remove that. I think it's a 10 millimeter bolt for that. So there's a bracket in the front that is holding the throttle cables. Um, you want to remove that bracket to be able to to lift up the manifold there's also two bolts in the back here uh, that you're gonna have to remove uh, and you're gonna have to just rotate that piece out of the way so you can lift up the manifold so we've got all the bolts off um, you want to go ahead and unplug any of the the other hoses or connectors uh, we pull this off the valve cover uh, there are some uh, vacuum lines in the back underneath there's two two hoses that you want to unplug uh, once you unplug those just go ahead and lift up the upper end and move it off to the side to get out your way so now that you've got that out the way uh, the next thing to do is to remove the fuel rails but in order to do that you have to remove a hose that is connected to the water pump uh, there's two bolts holding this uh, it's like a metal tube 
uh, coming out the water pump. There's one in the front there. And then there is one in the back. Um, the back, it's actually eh, under a bracket. It's kind of hard to see there. But all you need to do is just loosen that bolt there um, and slide it back. So you'll remove the front and, and just slide it back to, to remove that hose out the way. So in order to completely remove that metal hose coming off the water pump, there is a rubber hose that's attached to the back. You see the hose clamps there. So just get your pliers, your needle nose pliers, remove that clamp, slide that back, and disconnect that hose uh, from your piece. So there is a bolt on the back uh, connecting the fuel rail. You want to disconnect that. And then there's four bolts on the top end holding down the fuel rail. There's two on this side, clearly, and two on this side. Um, once you disconnect those five, you should be able to lift up the fuel rail, move that out of the way. Again, we didn't uh, completely disconnect it. Uh, any of the lines we just move those out the way uh, you want to remove the additional pieces attaching to the valve covers to get that out the way to lift up the fuel rail um, the fuel rail takes a little finagling uh, to try to get out of the way uh, but fairly simple stuff and again we just rotated it from the front once you've got the fuel rail out of the way you can go ahead and get you've got access to your uh, manifold bolts there's 11 bolts holding down the manifold, so you just want to loosen them. That's a pretty straight shot, just lifting that up out the way. Uh, after you do that, you want to go ahead and just remove your valve cover. Uh, there's only five bolts holding down the valve covers. Uh, here you see the <coughs> rocker arms and push rods. Uh, there are bolts in the middle holding down the, the heads and the arms. What you want to do is you want to remove those and keep the sets together so you know uh, which head goes which which arm and which position that they are at. Once you have all those removed, uh, you see the uh, first four bolts of the actual heads themselves. Um, we are using a torque wrench here to, to break those loose they are torqued down. Uh, I'll have all the torque specs uh, in a link below uh, for retightening everything. There's a couple of pretty good websites out there that have them. Uh, so it's uh, four bolts on the inside of the heads and then there's four bolts on the bottom of the heads there. In order to get to the heads or the bolts on the bottom, uh, you're actually going to have to disconnect the headers um, and move those out of the way uh, to, to get to those bottom bolts. Once you get to those bottom bolts, simple stuff, just go ahead and lift up your, your heads off the block. Pretty gnarly stuff. As you can see, uh, there's a bunch of uh, water and antifreeze uh, in the in the cylinder heads, which should not be there. Uh, here's a removal of the second head. Make sure you guys uh, check out the second video, uh, the rebuild for the top end. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, we're going to do some more stuff as well. So thanks for watching.